All righty. Have you ever just wanted to run up and slap somebody? I may have wanted to do that to Brett a few times when he disagreed <laughs> with me, but uh, we saw what happened yesterday with Will Smith and Chris Rock. But you know what happened today's game? We had Michael Brantley and Jordan Alvarez just go. They slapped some homers out of it. And then you saw that Farmer Valdez just slapped the Cardinals around. And uh, speaking of which, guess who's coming back to the Cardinals? Old Albert Pujols. We'll talk about that and more on this edition of the Locked on Astros podcast. And welcome to Locked On Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H Town Wheelhouse Chancy. Oh, oh, sorry. Uh, we are Locked On Houston Astros, and we hope that you join us for a daily Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. You can find me on Twitter at Eric Talk so You can find the show at Locked On Astros, your team every day. Brett, where can I find you at? They can find me at H Town Wheelhouse on Twitter and Instagram and Astros411 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Always positive. You don't have to worry about me slapping you. Always Stros. All right. When you're not slapping uh, one of your fellow actors or podcasters or coworkers or whatever you're doing, why don't you go ahead and subscribe to us on YouTube and go ahead and hit the like button and go and listen to us on your way to work, on way home for work, on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcast, uh, just go ahead and listen uh, to Locked on Astros podcast and make us your first listen. So um, I don't want to talk too much about that. I mean, I, I understand what happened with Will Smith. Uh, he lost his cool. Uh, he thought Chris Rock was making fun of his wife who had a medical condition. And so everybody's been in that situation where you wanted to defend your wife. And so uh, he just issued an apology a little while ago and said that that was not cool. Violence is not the answer. But uh, when it comes to my wife, I'm just, I just, I, I just snapped and, so, uh, I mean, I don't want to talk about that. That's not what we're here for, but uh, we're not making fun of Will Smith. It just, it just, it was just something out of nowhere. It's just like, well, it, it took over social media last night. No, it did. And Chris Rock sh showed incredible restraint, I right. thought was the better of the two. And so, you know, they're friends. And, but, you know, at the end of the day, um, the Houston Astros got down to business today. And look, Eric, I know it's spring training. You know, I I, I know you've got to take this stuff with a grain of salt, but we officially have like a four game winning streak going right now. I mean, the Astros were zero and four to start. They they're like four four their last four, and I know it's spring training, but but that's that's significant because even if it's the young guys or whatever, the team's starting to get in the rhythm. They're starting to feel like it's a baseball game. The pitchers are going longer. Um, in the games. And so this is, this is a fun spring training game to, you know, talk about. Yeah. From Valdez made his first start uh, of the season and he went three innings. Uh, he didn't give up any hits. He struck out three batters and you know what the key to his game was throwing first pitch strikes. This was something that he struggled with in 2021, but he did not struggle with in 2020. Uh, so th this is something that if he can get back to being that efficient pitcher he was in 2020, he, he could be a big piece to the Astros rotation. But last year, I know he was coming back from that finger injury. And uh, I know, uh, what did uh, Dusty Baker call him? The predator. And he was the well, super he, healer. He, and well, he came he said back. He, was the, he said he was Wolverine and he's like a quick healer. And, you know, he's like a, Yeah. He's I like, thought he, was, he said he was a predator or whatever. Okay. Matter. You know what? Maybe he was a predator. I, I think of Wolverine when, when you heal up because that's what he does. Right. Yeah. But um, uh, for him to come back as soon as he did and be able to pitch, but uh, yeah. we, to, um, to summarize Valdez's 2021 season was the playoffs was how good he did against the Boston Red Sox. What he pitched with eight innings and he shut them yeah. down and uh, it was just he basically carried the Astros into the World Series. And then he got basically shelled in uh, game two of the World Series. And it just uh, it's just it's just crazy yeah. how and if how helter skelter he was. Well, you know, that whole series, though, I think the World Series, though, as a whole, Eric, I think we can all agree as as an Astros community, whether you're an Astros fan, Astros game analyst, one, sorry. commentator. 
That's okay. I mean, that whole series outside of game two really just was one of those series where you just felt like the Braves were in control. And Framer Valdez, you know, we know that he's dealt with the mental issues in the past, you know, getting the psychiatrist or whatever to help him focus. You know, the mental part of your game in baseball is so key. But for him, if he feels in rhythm, if he feels good for the season and he's ready to go, he's a very dangerous pitcher. Um, opening day, we have the Angels. And who is it that has called his curveball the most deadly curveball in baseball? That's Mike, Mike Trout. Trout. Um, so he does say here, um, if you don't mind me sharing his quote, um, right. he says right here, I feel 100% prepared for the season. Right now, it's just some adjustments and continuing to get ready. I feel physically well and mentally well and ready for the 2022 season. So that is key, Eric. If one of your young pitchers that has a high upside, that has a lot of electricity on whether he's throwing the curve or the fastball, is feeling ready, I love to hear that. Because right. Justin Verlander's coming back. He's your stalwart. He's your mainstay. But he's coming off of TJ. The more these other guys feel great, and there's some other pitchers that perform well today that I think will pay dividends in the year. Dude, I'm getting really excited about this season. I, I I really think the cloud of the Correa thing has has moved on. I see a lot of hope for this team this season, especially from the pitchers. Yeah, going back to the first strikes uh, in 2020, he basically threw a um, first pitch strike at 59.7 percent. Major league average is about 60.6 percent. Mm. Last year, he uh, threw strike one 54.2 percent of the time. So that showed that he was struggling with command. I know a lot of people said, well, maybe it was the whole, um, the sticky stuff. The, um, a lot of people suggested that, but, uh, so he just said that uh, he was focusing on getting ready to, uh, throwing strike one and just, uh, basically just getting that, um, key because that's the key to him uh, being able to because if you get strike one then you can basically set up the batter to uh to to set up the rest of the pitch the right pitch sequence yeah so so that's the key okay when when you are trying to get in a rhythm especially early on in the season if you can control the strike zone if you can command the call to be a pitcher's count the first two or right. three pitches that's when you're able to really fall in because when a pitcher gets behind when a pitcher doesn't hit the zone and then he kind of has to come back with a fastball and throw almost a meat pitch over the plate to the zone that's when they get punished right. and I love that he's recognized that and I love that that's been a focus of his he is your consummate professional he's your he's your hard worker he's going to grind and I just I see big things out of Valdez this year. Um, I know Luis Garcia was really kind of the star pitching wise because he just had that amazing rookie year, but Framber Valdez may very well be the leader of this rotation going into twenty twenty two. Yeah, um, don't forget that Lance McCullers had a pretty great year too last year too. But no, um, you're right, you're right. He did, he did. But I, I guess, I guess more or less, um, I'm talking about the younger guys or the newer guys, okay. right? Um, yeah. And and so and so that's where I'd put him there. To close out the book on Valdez, he said uh, the quote he had after that, after throwing strike one, it's going to open the whole pl playbook on other pitches you can follow up with. That That's a quote I was looking for. So uh, speaking of the rotation, I know I mentioned this and you you still kept on wanting to push him. You're like, Eric, I want Christian Javier in the rotation. He's my guy. He's my number one or at least my number five starter. And you kept on pushing for him. And yeah, I agree with you. I think well, he, I he corrected good. that though. I corrected that last podcast. Remember, I finally came around. Okay, I finally came around. We we uh, talked about it. I said, I see. I, I missed to remember that. Well, I'm Andy Pettit. Um, well, okay. You know what? I actually came around on on another podcast that I start on, and I oh hold on, I gave you credit. Okay, I gave Eric Heisman credit. I said the whole time I've been saying Jake Odorizzi needs to be in the pen or traded. Christian Javier needs a start, and Eric, my co Eric, the co-host, you know, we both share the show. He has said the whole way that it needs to be Joe, Jake Odorizzi, that Javier needs to be in the bullpen. And I said, you know what? It really makes sense. Odorizzi does need to be that spot. And then what happened? 
Yeah. So we'll have to talk about that in a second because maybe uh, Christian Javier to kind of bulk up or get ready for to for those extended bullpen roles. He needs to, some AG1. That's right. AG1 is a great thing. It is a product that I've been taking daily for the last couple of weeks, and it is amazing because what it is, it's one scoop of athletic greens. You're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, pro, um, probiotics, and antigens to help you start your day right. It helps me start my day right. It's for gut health. It gives you energy, recovery, focus. It helps with aging, all things. And why do I like it? Because it tastes good. Because it doesn't taste like you're downing a, a you know, a can of wheatgrass. Um, you basically must incorporate taking it at least one time a day, and when you focus on that and you make that a part of your daily routine, you will feel better. It will help you feel better. You'll reclaim your health. You'll reclaim your strength. You'll reclaim your immune system. So there's no need to try a million different pills. So right now, to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is is visit athleticgreens.com forward slash MLB network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com forward slash MLB network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Thank you for making Locked On Astros podcast your first listen every day. Make sure you keep on subscribing to us on YouTube. Keep on uh, making, uh, giving us a like and keep on listening to, to us on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcast, keep on listening to us. So uh, let's go and continue this conversation about Christian Javier, Justin Verlander. He's definitely in um, Valdez, especially after his performance day and his history. He's in Luis Garcia after uh, almost winning the rookie year last year. Uh, he's in Jose or with his uh, pedigree and his history. He's in, and with the money you're paying uh, Odorizzi, he's going to be in unless he just proves that he's just not capable of doing it. And I think last year he just never got into the groove because of the late start to spring training. And yeah. just remember, this guy does have a history of success. Last year, just he wasn't given a chance. And we saw brief stints of him being good. So Christian Javier is a has this experience of being a bullpen he has the experience of pitching one inning he has the experience of pitching multiple innings and we know how Odorizzi likes to gripe is that the proper way to say it so yeah. can you imagine dusty baker going fair. up to um jake and uh Odorizzi saying hey odo i'm gonna put you in bullpen how about that and he's gonna be like the heck you're not i'm not going <laughs> to like bullpen <laughs> Yeah, he's like, you're not paying me to not start. And, you know, Odorizzi has a lot of pride, as he should. He's yeah. a professional pitcher. He wants to be a starter. I don't have, I don't fault him for that at all. Like you said, um, I think perfectly that he had a rough, like his start to the season last year was not typical. And someone like him, a starter, needs that. Christian Javier, even though I kicked and screamed the whole way, um, some people helped open my eyes last season to see his value in the bullpen. I still think he does have value as a starter, um, but where he needs to be is he needs to be in that bullpen, especially if that's where Dusty Baker wants him. And Christian Javier is going to go wherever the club wants him. I mean, right. whether you're in the bullpen or whether you're starting, you're on this major league roster. Christian Javier has got that invisible. I hope we see the effectiveness of that come back. And I hope we see the tenacity that he brings with him back on the mound. If Anoli Paredes is in there, these guys, if they can put together solid years, this club is going to be a force to be reckoned with, not just in the regular season, Eric, but in the playoffs. Yeah. Baker said that he's trying, uh, they're going to try to stretch him out soon, but they also want to keep his arm resilient to the spot start or in the bullpen. And he said that's very valuable guy, especially when you're going to get to that 13 pitcher limit in May. He's very big in that equation, so you're not going to be able to carry the extra reliever uh, in May. So there, that's definitely Javier is going to be very big for this team. And Javier is um, on um, him being in bullpen. I feel good about this role. I came mentally prepared to just help the team. 
I'm going to come ready and help the team with that and just stay prepared and do anything they ask me to do. So, yeah, that's and that's the mindset you want. Pitchers can't be selfish in this situation, especially when you have five major league pitchers on the roster. They have a good problem. They have an abundance of pitchers. Now, they don't have a ton of left-handers in the bullpen. We know that that may be a hole, even though they have Maton. Um, we can talk today a little bit about Taylor. Taylor looked really good on the mound. If Blake Taylor can be an above-average lefty, that really he helps you bridge that yeah. gap. And then you got Maton, so that technically you, you kind of have two. But I still think at the trade deadline, they really need to look at some left-handed relief pitching. Number one, they got the cap space, and maybe they can get some draft capital. Some of these guys start doing good in the minors where they have an abundance of, of a player at a certain position and trade some of those guys off for someone who can come in halfway through the season and help at the major league level. Yes. Um, so I know that a lot of it was made by Ryan Presley not having his great stuff today, but he still uh, retired to side. He had one strikeout. And his velocity was down uh, like three miles per hour. But he said, dude, this is spring training. Um, like relievers, we we strive off of adrenaline. And uh, so this is just, it's a practice game. It's practice. There is, yeah. It's there, practice. It's practice we're talking about. We're having a conversation <laughs> about practice. Yeah, he went Allen Iverson <laughs> on him. But seriously, he made a good point. Because there were a lot of the uh, Monday morning quarterbacks or the, or the armchair coaches saying, oh, Presley just doesn't look the same. He's not going to be sharp this year. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Now, look, if Presley is striking out people or getting out of innings clean and he's not at his best, dude, the league better watch out. That means, like, can right. you imagine when he's at his best? Can you imagine when that adrenaline's flowing? Brian Presley has just become one of the best relief pitchers. And, Eric, the Astros at some point before he becomes a free agent have got to either talk to him, say we got to have a handshake deal before the end of the season, or we got to get something done now or mid season or, but we we've got to keep Presley on board. I do not want to see him go anywhere else because he fits nicely on the mound and in the clubhouse. Yeah. To kind of finish off this uh, thought, uh, he said, you have a couple thousands of people here watching. I'm not really worried about velocity. I'd rather be 92 and 94 than 97 and 98 and all over the place. I faced some really good hitters today, and I was able to get them out with not my best stuff. So. There you go. Yeah, point taken and duly noted because that's what you want out of your pitching core. In spring training, everybody's not Max Scherzer, right? Everybody's not going balls to the wall, 89 pitches in a spring training game. So you temper your expectations. The Astros know what they have, and there's no room to panic. It's spring training, but again, they've won four in a row. I think that's great. I mean, winning is so much better than losing regardless. Right. Uh, so I know that, uh, what's his name? Adam Morgan? Uh, is that mm -hmm. his name? Uh, yeah, Adam Morgan. Okay, cool. Yeah. I knew his name. <laughs> okay. You always, you always say it like you're like you're quizzing me. Yes, that's his name. Like, is, is there something I'm missing? Well, it says A Morgan on the little yes. box score. So it is, uh, he yes. pitched an inning, and then you had Blake Taylor pitch an inning. He had two strikeouts, like you said. Um, so the Astros bullpen did really good. The Matan gave up the one run, but the Astros pitched nine innings with uh, 10 strikeouts, only gave up the one run. So overall, the Astros pitching has been a lot better. The Astros offense, uh, while you'd like to have a little bit more, they got the two runs. And they got the two runs from the two left-handed bats, the two softballs, if you want to call them that. Michael Brantley, I know that I yesterday I said, man, I would like to see a little bit more power from Michael Brantley. And then <laughs> what he did, he actually – hit a home run today yeah so i and i actually i don't know if you noticed the props i gave you on twitter i said i said i told eric that now nah, we don't need brantley to hit for power we just need him to hit he doesn't need to worry about power he hits a home run so i need to find what reverse psychology predictions i need to make for players because they seem to be doing opposite of what you i need to do something do. for goodrum that's what you need to do but wait oh, okay. a second wait a second okay Go ahead. Uh, also, Alvarez, he hit a bomb. That's right. Uh, so when Alvarez gets one, he gets one. He also um, had two, uh, I mean, one other hit today, but he hit a 110 mile, 10.5 mile per hour uh, homer, and it was a blast. And uh, Chandler Rome was like, uh, Alvarez just hit the 
bleep out of the ball. <laughs> he did. He crushed it. I was actually watching the game at that time. It was during my break at work, and he absolutely obliterated that baseball. And that's a ballpark. The commentators from St. Louis were saying that even though the wind was blowing out, that even if the wind was blowing in, that that ball might have still gone over because he absolutely crushed it. It was a laser shot. Jordan Alvarez, his other hit was an opposite field single where he hit against the shift. They had the shift to the right. He hit the ball to left field. And we saw that a lot last year, Eric. We saw, if you look at his spray chart from last year, he knows how to hit all sides of the park. Right. So even though the shift is still in play this year, because it is, it's still Jordan Alvarez can hit around that. But it's great to see Michael Brantley do that because, you know, Yuli has three home runs. Brantley has a home run. Um, Alvarez has a home run. You have Pedro Leon. You know, we've got guys out there that are hitting bombs. And we've got several guys on our team that are going to probably push the 30 home run mark. I think Jordan and Tucker are going to fight for the home run lead for this team. And I bet they both get to 40. I'm going to call it right now. All right. I think that Dusty Baker's trolling us right now. He had Jose Siri leading off today. He did. See, I'm pretty sure Dusty listens to the show. I'm pretty no, sure. No, no, I don't think he's trolling us. I think he's trolling everybody else. Like Chandler Rome and a whole bunch of people made a big, uh, big deal about the Jeremy Pena possibly leading off. So he's like, hmm, let me just mess with everybody and go and put Jose Siri in the leadoff spot. And well, no, I, we, and we and we talked about him messing with the lineup, and you actually yeah. talked about him putting Carlos Correa and there was this huge debate last year. Is Correa going to lead off? And he didn't even lead off. I mean, you know, here's the thing. The reason why they got the young guys up there, the series, the Peñas, because they have speed. If you have speed at the top of the lineup and that guy can get on base, that is huge for the guys behind him. And with a bunch of contact hitters behind them, you need a Siri on the base to get around those base paths. So, you know, Dude, I hope that we see some exciting moments from Jose Siri. I need some Jose Siri walk-off hits. I need some Jose Siri. I need a Jose Siri home steal. That's what I want this year. If I can have anything, one request, Jose Siri, I need you to steal home at least once this year. It would be phenomenal. All right. We also had the Astros debut of Franklin Barreto today. And so he went over two. And so he was a former top prospect. And if you want to know more about the top prospects out there, why don't you go check out uh, Lindsey Crosby over at the locked on MLB prospects. He does a great job. I know he was on with Brett the other day uh, talking about Jeremy Pena. So go check out the locked on MLB prospects, make them your him, your second listen every day after you make the locked on Astros prospects ask the uh, locked on Astros pro- podcast your first listen and uh just uh, he he's uh, worth listening to no yeah definitely and you know eric we're actually getting a lot of good response and just to reiterate something he said he does have a mailbag every monday so if you have questions um hit him up on uh, twitter and you know go to him uh, i think it's locked on farm at gmail.com and he will he will answer your questions specific player questions Whenever Forrest Whitley, because I talked to him today, whenever Forrest Whitley starts starts pitching, has a couple starts, we're going to do a Forrest Whitley feature. We're probably going to do something on Hunter Brown and Corey Lee in the near future. So we'll be doing some more player features, especially guys that are farmhands right now, because, I mean, it was indelible for me to sit and listen to him. He's He is your minor league baseball encyclopedia. All righty. Um, big word there. So. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about the MLB pipeline right now. Okay. Um, it, it feels like a perfect time to do that. So it just came up today and uh, we have a new number one prospect. It's not Corey Lee. It is Jeremy Pena. He has leapfrogged uh, Corey Lee. He has leapfrogged Pedro Leone. And yes, Astros Nation, Forrest Whitley is still on the list. He He's still- actually jumped. He jumped up yes. though. Mm-hmm. because he's looked good this spring so far and uh, he's got the velocity back. So I think that he's uh, jumped up because of that reason. So number one is Jeremy Pena. His ETA is 2022. Uh, well, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Eric, for the, the, the mystery is solved. Eric figured it out. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. 
Number Good. two, Corey Lee uh, is the catcher, and his ETA is 2022. I Unless there's an injury. Well, I mean, here's the thing. If Corey Lee, and let me speak on that real quick. If Corey Lee hits the cover off the ball in AAA, and Martin Maldonado is not hitting the cover off the ball, they will have Martin Maldonado to start to catch for certain pitchers, and they will I, they will bring Corey Lee up. If anything, if they're like, hey, there's one day where we're going to give Alvarez a rest because he's played you know, so many games in a row, and then the game after that we need to give Maldi a rest, you put Corey Lee at DH, and then you bring him in as a catcher. You see what I'm saying? Corey Lee, I'm telling you, this kid has a bat. This kid has a gun behind the plate, and he is a great defensive catcher. So I think, Eric, there is a real possibility that you do see Corey Lee. It's a long season. And we have stretches at the beginning of the season, midway through the season, where they play a ton of games back to back to back. So um, I think the 2022 is not too, um, is not too, uh, what, it's precocious. Uh, yeah. You like the big words I'm using? There yes. Go. And Jason Castro has already kind of hinted at, if not said, this is his last season. Yeah. So maybe they're going to bring him up. Um, definitely when rosters expand later on to give him some experience at the major league level. So, so are they going to do tributes to Jason Castro for his last game at, at Edmonds field in Anaheim? <laughs> no. Okay. I like your eyes. Jason Castro. <laughs> they're going to honor him. legend. Black. Astros, Astros and Twins Jeez. legend. And Twins legend. <laughs> yes, Carlos Cray is going to give him like an award or something in Minnesota. Ooh, that hurts. All right, so um, number three is Hunter Brown. That's not a surprise. I, he's definitely had a great showing this spring. Uh, Pedro Leon is number four. Force Whitley is number five. Number six is Colin Barber. Number seven has already made his debut, but uh, he's still, I don't think we've seen the best of him yet, but he's looked good at times. Peter Solomon. Number eight is your guy, Sean Dubin. Number yeah. nine is Joe Perez, another guy we've had on the show. And number 10 is the guy I'm most interested in. His ETA is 2024, but Alex Santos, he is only 20 years old. Yeah, but. he's yeah he's out of high school, and let me just say this because you mentioned so Perez and Barber, okay, Whitley and Leon, those are all twenty twenty three expected arrivals. Dubin and Solomon are twenty twenty two. Solomon, we saw last year, he will definitely be back up. And Dubin, if Dubin gets in the groove, I'm telling you, this kid is electric. We've had him on the show before. He's a great guy, but he has electric stuff. He's got great off speed stuff. He's got a really good spin rate, Eric. I am excited about seeing Sean Dubin break through that shell. And I love Alex Santos rounding out the top 10. They say this is the best pitcher to come out of New York high school for the last 20, 30 years. That's high praise um, because they produce some pretty good players up north. Yeah, and I think this is a big year for Joe Perez, I, especially if Yuli does become a free agent and the Astros don't re-sign him. First base opens up. I mean, maybe they have Alvarez play some first base this year. Maybe they have um, they give somebody else um, a. Well, I to think play. I think Taylor Jones is going to be that guy. I I really think Taylor Jones is going to be your well, next competition. So definitely, well, yeah. But but I think though Taylor Jones would have the upper hand because he's been up in the major leagues before, and I just I just love the kid's bat. I mean, I I, I really think there is a massive ceiling for him to achieve in the major leagues. He's tall, he's strong, he's athletic. And um, I mean, first base is not that hard to master. Right. Let's just, let's just be honest. It's not one of the toughest positions. Now right. it's tough if you don't play it and you, and you go play it offhand, right. but there's a lot more skill involved when you're like shortstop, I feel like, or even third. Um, first base is some that, that, that Taylor Jones could handle at a major league level, I believe. Yeah, I don't want to go through everybody because we don't have time, but I am right. really glad that the Astros, I mean, that MLB canceled the Rule 5 draft because Yiner Diaz is still an Astros player because this kid is a good catcher. This He tore up the Astros minor league system once he was traded over to the Astros. Uh, another kid that you need to watch out for is Jonathan Bermudez. I know that he didn't have a great spring training with the Astros, but he got his foot wet. 
Um, and also Matthew Barefoot. This is a guy that kind of opened some eyes last year. And uh, with the um, – what level did he get up to? I think he got up to – Corpus Christi, but uh, so, he, he had a really good season hitting 20 home runs and um, with 60 RBIs, 68 RBIs. Good. So, so here's some, some interesting names. So Bermudez, I believe, sees a major leagues at some point this year. His estimated arrival date is, is this year. He was the minor league player of the year last year. Um, another guy, Jimmy Endersby, who we interviewed on this show, I believe he starts in Corpus and ends up in, in Sugarland. He has a chance to come up. And then they have Corey Jolks as a 2022 call up, possibly. I think this kid, let me tell you, this kid's a local kid out of Clearbrook High School. This kid's strong as an ox. He's got some really good tools. He can hit, he can field. Um, he's got a really good arm. So these are some players that they may come up, they may go down. Some of them may be late season call ups just to get them some work. Some of them might get invited to the Arizona Fall League. But we have quite a few guys to come up to maybe get a chance to prove themselves. And Tyler Ivey, he had such a great start, and then he went out with the injury. Tyler Ivey is another guy that we've for, almost forgotten about that really can ha that has potential to contribute to this pitching staff. Right. So um, the Astros made some more cuts today, and Noli Paredes and Peter Solomon were optioned, and Parker Musinski and Edwin Diaz were reassigned. So Anoli Paredes, I mean, he was not doing terrible this spring, and Peter Solomon was doing great, but they they didn't really have a chance to really make the opening day roster. What the Astros are doing, especially with the shortened spring training, at this point they're trying to get all their major league arms the the most yeah. uh, pitching time. And if they need more arms, they'll just say, "Hey, Peter, come up." Well, hey, and, you know, Anoli. yeah, right. And um, you know, Solomon got touched up a couple times. Um, not horrible, but, oh, that's right, not, that's right. but, but not where you want him to be. Peter Solomon though, has big league stuff. I mean, make no bones about it. Anoli Paredes has big league stuff. Anoli Paredes. I have more faith right now in Peter Solomon making his way quicker than Anoli Paredes. But if Anoli Paredes can hone his, his skills and his herky jerky motion and he can find the strike zone more consistently. I love this guy's energy. I love the tenacity he brings. And that personality fits well, especially on this pitching staff. Um, I still have Franklin Barreto's um, spring training stats up. And guess what? He's a career 316 hitter with a 914 OPS with nine home runs and 30 RBIs. In How many? Training. Oh, in spring training. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Well, hey, you know what? Every everybody can everybody can be a superstar on in the, the league softball team. In the regular season, he's a career 175. Oh, come on, man. Why are you 549? Why are you, man down, man down. Um, officer, can I report a crime? Um, yes, Eric just completely had this guy stand in front of his car and he ran over him. He threw him under the bus. How are you going to do that to a man? Come on, man. He He's like, oh, you're a 310 hitter in spring training, but you sure can't hit in a regular season. Well, well, we'll I can't have hit you. In I know. Season, I, know it's, I know it's a little tongue in cheek, and we have fun on this show. One of the things that we do love about the Astros is they know how to prepare their players. You can, you can bet that any guy that comes up, whether they're pitchers, whether they're infielders or outfielders, they're going to be ready. They're not going to let them come up until they're ready. That's why we will not see Pedro Leon, I don't think, at all in 2022. Wait for him in 2023. He needs a year. That guy is going to absolutely crush Constellation Field with the Sugarland Space Cowboys. I'm looking forward to watching him play many, many games out there and hit many, many moonshots. Hey, guess what? We won't be booing Albert Pujols anymore. He's going to be playing with the Cardinals. He's back with the Nets. Wait, hold on. Do we... Do we not play the Cardinals this year? I don't think so. I mean, I don't know for sure. Well, if we play the Cardinals, we'll be booing him. No. no. Come on. He's with think... the Cardinals, the Astros' nemesis. Oh, I don't think you, we played you him. Were at the, you were at the game with me. Well, not with me. You were you were at the same game. He hit the home run. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're always going to boo Albert Pujols. I respect oh, yeah. him. Yeah. But I, oh, well, I thought don't you meant think... that boos were ending. No, I just don't think that we're going to no. be playing them. Okay. That's what I meant. 
Well, maybe not, but I always boo our pools. Totally respect him, but still boo the heck out of him. Like he came out of right field. It was great. Oh, we're pool holes. And I was like, oh my gosh, like the second coming to Jesus. I mean, it was amazing. He came out and and then Brian McTaggart tweeted um earlier. They said our pools is gonna come in the game in the fifth inning and hit three home runs against the Astros because Albert. <laughs> that's <laughs> because what he that's does. What he does. <laughs> Yeah, except everybody else, he strikes out eight times. I'm looking real quick, but I don't think so because I think okay. we play mostly. Well, I wasn't the, sure. I wasn't sure. Because we, we play mostly the NL East this year. Oh, man, this is the last run. That would be great. Well, so the Cardinals need to make it to the World Series against the Houston Astros. And then it's on like Donkey Kong, and then we're beaning Albert Pujols. We're not no, pitching we to him. We're either them. walking him. Hey, we'll play him in the World Series, Eric. Cardinals, Astros, World Series. I'm calling it <laughs> just because I want to see Carlos Car-, Car-, Car. Car. Sorry. Oh, I want to see Albert Pujols get beat by the Astros in the World Series. I would love that. I want to see him strike out. I want to see him hit a moonshot to left field and it go foul, like two of them in a row, and then strike out swinging. So that uh, would be awesome. So, wouldn't you love to be paid two point five million dollars in your final season? Congratulations, hey. Albert Pujols. You can't mm-hmm. run for real. But uh, thankfully, the Cardinals uh, in the National League now have the DH. So now <laughs> Albert Pujols has, has a spot because uh, Goldsmith is at first base now. So that's oh, yeah. all we got for this edition of the Lockdown Nationals podcast. Thank you for listening. Uh, go and tune in. We're, we have a short video we're going to play after uh, the credits. And thank you for listening. For my name, uh, for Brett Chancy. Uh, My name is Eric Heisman, and keep on uh, tuning in to the Locked on Astros podcast.